Hi, my name is Patricia Dodson. Today we are going to talk about opiate-induced constipation and how to prevent it. Constipation is defined as the inability or infrequency to properly empty your bowels. Constipation is a leading cause of visits to the emergency room and physician's office and accounts for more than $6.9 billion a year to healthcare. Constipation can occur at any age and can be acute or chronic in nature. However, treatment and diagnosis include the reasons for its cause. We will go further into depth in a later slide as to what causes it, but a few risk factors include medications, such as opiates, poor diets, slowing of the gut, and lack of exercise. Constipation is defined so as the learning about constipation or important to, to you. properly empty your bowel. First, most types of constipation are preventable. The emergency room Second, and preventing office, and even and caring for, for constipation can occur at home billion dollars without a year having to visit healthcare. the emergency room constipation or your doctor's office. Can occur at any age, which means less money out of your pocket in for health care costs. However, treatment Finally, and diagnosis constipation can be painful. So it is will important go to learn ways to keep your bowels happy as to what and avoid these it. painful situations. But a few risk factors include constipation can also lead to life-threatening conditions opiates, such as obstruction, poor diets, which requires immediate surgery, gut, and hospitalization. And the learning objectives of this presentation are identifying the signs and symptoms of constipation, being able to identify risk factors of constipation and identifying ways to reduce the risk of constipation, which will all be covered in the following slides. Today's current standard of normal bowel movements dates back to 1909 by Sir Arthur Hurst and is defined as having anywhere from three bowel movements a day to as little as one bowel movement every three days. Today, to diagnose constipation, the Rome 3 criteria is used. The Rome 3 criteria is shown on this slide and physicians will diagnose after two items have been met. Let's review them. Number one, straining 25% of the time to have a bowel movement. Number two, having less than three bowel movements per week. Number three, having hard or lumpy stools 25% of the time with bowel movements. Number four, feeling of incomplete bowel emptying 25% of the time. And number five, a feeling of sensation of blockage for 25% of your bowel movements. A handout will be given to you for home use with the Rome 3 criteria. The Bristol stool chart is another visual aid that will be given to you for home use and can help identify constipation. Let's practice what we've learned about signs and symptoms of constipation. Answer the question. Signs of constipation include, one, having a bowel movement every day, two, having a hard stool 10% of the time, three, straining with 25% of bowel movements, or four, having watery stools. The correct answer is three. Straining to have a bowel movement 25% of the time meets Rome 3 criteria. Number one is incorrect. Having a bowel movement every day is normal bowel function. Number two is also incorrect. Having hard stools 10% of the time is normal. However, having hard stools 25% of the time can signify constipation in the Rome 3 criteria. And number four, having watery stools can also show signs of diarrhea as shown in the Bristol stool chart. Now let's talk about risk factors. Age and gender are the two non-preventable factors of constipation. 
Constipation can occur in all age groups. However, there is a significant increase seen in the elderly, age 65 and older. Women are also diagnosed at a three times higher rate than men. Decreased rectal nerve sensation and decreased muscular tone to facilitate pushing along with slow gut motility are some physiological factors that can lead to constipation. Lifestyle changes such as lack of hydration, decreased nutritional intake, and a sedentary lifestyle can also be factors. However, chronic medical conditions with the use of medications only compound the problem. Opioid medications to reduce pain, such as Percocet, Norco, and morphine, are the main medications that can lead to constipation. This chart shows you several more risk factors of constipation and are broken down into diagnostic categories. These categories include functional, structural, metabolic, neurologic, psychogenic, and drugs. Functional include diet, motility disturbances, and its sedentary lifestyle. Structural include hemorrhoids, diverticulosis, mass lesions with obstruction. Metabolic include diabetes, hypercalcemia, hypokalemia, hypothyroidism, and pregnancy. Neurologic, stroke, multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, and brain injuries. Psychogenic include anxiety, depression, and somatization. Drugs include opiates that we've talked about earlier, anticholinergics, antidepressants, calcium channel blockers, and psychotropic drugs. Let's practice what we've learned. Risk factors of constipation include 1. Having a sedentary lifestyle. 2. Taking opioid medications. 3. Being 65 years or older. 4. All of the above. That's right. The answer is 4. All of the above. As we've already talked about, risk factors of constipation include being a female, being over the 65, taking opioid medications, having a sedentary lifestyle, and having a poor diet. How to reduce your risk of constipation? Eat a diet high in fiber. A diet of at least 20 to 30 grams of fiber per day. High fiber diet foods include whole grain wheats, beans, peas, broccoli, and raspberries, just to name a few. Make sure you drink plenty of water. Did you know that your body is approximately 60% water? So we need to be drinking eight, eight ounces of water, which equals a half a gallon every day. Drinks such as coffee, soda, and tea actually take water out of our bodies and are not good sources of hydration. Stay active. Staying active and doing simple activities such as walking for 20 minutes a day can help keep your gut moving. Using stool softeners and laxative is another way that you can reduce your risk of constipation. Some examples include colace, Docolax, and Senna. However, be sure to talk to your physician about long-term use of these medications. Let's practice one more time what we've learned. What are ways to reduce your risk of constipation? One, eating potato chips. Two, eating a diet high in fiber. Three, decreasing activity levels. Four, drinking eight or more cups of water a day. Five, 
Numbers 2 and 4. Yep, that's right, number five. The answer is number two and four. As we've talked about earlier, the way to reduce your risk of constipation includes eating a diet high in fiber of 20 to 30 grams a day, drinking plenty of fluid, which is water, that's eight, eight ounces a day, staying active, and possibly using stool softeners. Even though I'm teaching you ways to prevent constipation, it is important to know when to seek medical care. If you're experiencing intense abdominal pain, blood in your stool, vomiting, no bowel movements for greater than four days, a hard, rigid stomach, or a fever of 100.1 or greater, please seek medical help. Are there any questions that I can answer?